I titled this Voice of the Mountain. I am a mountain. I stand strong, stable, and secure. I am supported and supportive. I am unmovable, and yet I will always move for the one with true faith. I see from the heights of perspective and have stood for eons of time. I watch the world change, and yet I stay still through all the changes. It matters not to me. I accept all beings, for I know the one living presence within all that is. I know the truth that all beings have the right to exist and the right to express. I am unconditional, constantly giving thanks. I will always be, regardless of your expression. I observe the evolutionary journey of man and their changing choices of states of being. I am unmoved. I accept all that comes out of the world of man and of nature, every situation, every circumstance. I have no concern for results, make no meaning of happenings, and do not attribute importance. I judge neither good nor bad, for I see the patterns of perfection behind all the outworkings. I know that all things are equal within the oneness, and all that moves is temporary and passing. None of these things move me. I am a mountain. That kind of sums up my ideas of the point of being a mountain. And I see it in primarily for myself, from my own perspective, relationship with how we receive our world. Because all of what comes to the world from us, to us, that's what has the ability to trigger a reaction that can move us, sway us, emotional ups and downs. But what would it be like to be so still, so present, so neutral, that none of these things move me? Can you identify with the consciousness of a mountain as represented in some space within yourself that can look out onto the world from this eternal presence of knowing that things move, things happen? I don't have to make it mean anything. I don't have to get exalted or upset. It just is. It is what it is. And in that, I can be in stillness and peace. Because our human habit is to look into the outer world to try to find cause for our experience. Isn't that the whole thing about superstition? Trying to make up some causal reason why something happens? There's a space beyond that. I want to tell you a little story to close my time. There was once a farmer who had a son and a wife, and the wife died. 
And so for many years, it was just the old man farmer and his son working the fields. They had a horse and a plow. And one day, the old horse died. And so him and his son had to pull the plow. And the village people, village people, the townsfolk, they came close to him and they were like, oh, your horse died. This is so sad, so bad, so horrible. And the old farmer says, we shall see. But the village people felt so bad that they pulled their money and bought his family a new horse. I was like, how wonderful. Now you don't have to pull the plow. We shall see. Well, one day this new horse ran away. And now the horse is gone and the townspeople are back. How horrible. Now you have to pull the plow again. The horse is gone. We shall see. The horse returns with two other wild horses that come along with it. And the townspeople are like, how wonderful, how amazing. You're so abundant. Now you have three horses. This is fantastic. We shall see, says the old man. Well, the son trying to break in one of the wild horses gets bucked and breaks his leg. Now the son can't help with the chores. And the townspeople again are, oh, so horrible. Your son broke his leg. This is so bad. We shall see. A week later, the army comes into the town, recruiting young men for the war. The son with a broken leg, unable to serve, was passed by. And the townspeople come again. Oh, how lucky you are that your son didn't have to go off to war and get killed and that he can stay home. We shall see. That's how I want to meet my life. <laughs>